Hello and welcome. This is founder Layroon with Fantasy Grounds Academy. Today I'm going to use the D&D 5e rule set. I'm going to use the character wizard and I'm going to try to build a Harringen character, which is the rabbit folk race that came out of the UA, the most recent batch. This is also included in the new Feywild Witchlight product and this is going to be like a tutorial and also some lore and kind of going over some things in fantasy grounds so i'm going to do something that i don't normally do which is go through some coding a little bit because this character has a couple things that you might want to do later i've already done the coding but i wanted to show you a little bit of it um, and if you're not sure about it or you don't want to take the time to learn it. Um, you can always pick up like Rob Tui's coding effects. Um, normally he's pretty up to date on those. So if you want the racial abilities for the new fairy folk and the uh, rabbit folk, um, pretty sure the next day or so, or right now, he's probably already updated it. So if you own the Rob Tui coding effects bundle, um, the racial traits and such would probably be there. And there's also some backgrounds too. So uh, without further ado, let's get going here. So a couple things I wanted to let you know that I'm using the latest, greatest version of Fantasy Grounds Unity. Uh, I updated it yesterday and it helped Smiteworks a little bit with uh, any bugs I might find. If you guys notice anything out of whack or if the character builder doesn't seem to be working right with uh, published content, let them know. Uh, at the time, um, most of the problems that most people are going to come across probably are going to be homebrew, and I don't think it's quite there yet for homebrew. So if you're working on a custom class or race or something and you're using the character wizard, it may not pick up those if you don't format it exactly the way it is for the D&D content or the official content. So um, that probably won't be for a while. So hopefully in, in time that'll, that'll get better. But for the time being, um, if you see any official content that's broken, report it into the House of Healing and they'll, they'll get right on it. I mean, they've been pretty adamant about getting the fixes out there and making sure that this wizard works because they have to go back retroactively and fix those uh, whereas Pathfinder 2 has the character builder in it so it, it inherits it inherits all the changes that went along with it whereas the D&D &D character builder they kind of have to go backwards and, and try to retrofit it to everything that's already out so a little bit different approach I think it's a little bit harder to be honest but anyways we have the character wizard I'm working with it as best I can I'm not saying it's perfect, but it is a good way to speed up the process. Probably cuts down about a half an hour is what I timed myself. So I did the old traditional drag and drop method. And in this case, I'm going to be using the character wizard. But I've done both ways for the same character, and I save about 20 to 30 minutes. So anytime you're building a bunch of characters, uh, saving a half an hour is good. All right, so first things first. Um, I'm going to build a Harringen uh, race character. Um, her name is uh, Hari Harringen. She's a bard. We're going to level her up to level three. Uh, she's in the College of Eloquence. And she is basically going to be like a interpreter slash recruiter. She basically works for the, the Witchlight carnival so she's going to be the one that helps them um, find new uh, new employees and people that will stay with the circus and she's with them now but uh, her life was different before she started so uh, her life took on a magical nature she was at one time a real rabbit and over time she evolved into this humanoid and this was something that happened from the magic of the Feywild she was just an, an an animal and she kind of merged with the magic of the witch light and now she's a part of the world and she comes and goes from the prime material plane through uh, magical portals and unbeknownst to her she's she's pretty much just thinking that she's in the same place because she rarely leaves the forest so she's or she'll stick around the forest she doesn't normally go to cities or anything like that she will stop by towns occasionally if they're on the edges of the uh, wherever the portal is, but she, for the most part, she stays kind of nearby. So Ari Herringen is basically a player character, level three female bard, 
College of Eloquence, and we're going to build her with the character wizard. So this is just one scene that I've made. It has the fog rolling by. I put a little bit of effects on her magic in her hands, so it kind of has a kind of a wavy effect. These are some of the things you can do to add some color and some you know immersion to your games. The other scene that I have is her walking in the forest. And this is something that I just kind of put together on Hero Forge. So if you guys are Hero Forge fans, uh, you can go there and design your own characters and you can use these little scenes to help you flesh your character out. So these are actually minis, but uh, I thought it would work really well. I don't have any effects on this one. I thought it looks pretty good with the sun streaming through the forest. It's daytime. And that's basically what our token looks like. So if you guys are interested in Hero Forge, you can build things like this, and, and it kind of makes for some good immersion and some fun. So that is basically what we're doing here, is we're going to build characters based on that uh, the new rules that are coming out. So if I go to my library, and you can see I have quite a few things loaded here, but I have the D&D, the Wild, Beyond, the Witchlight, and I have the Player's Handbook. So if you have those two, you should be able to build one of these characters. This is assuming that you either own the content or your DM is giving you access to the content. So that just depends on what your situation is. But if you are going to um, basically build a character on your own, you're going to need to have at least a subscription. I would have recommend the player's handbook. And even if you have the digital uh, D&D Beyond or the physical book, you still probably want to get at least that book for, for Fantasy Grounds. And then all the rest of the stuff you can build over time. The other thing is that uh, I have some map packs loaded here and some of the other rule sets and, and not rule sets, but other rule books just in case. But there's a character module is what you will need to load if you want to build a character or your DM has to share that with you. So in the reference manual under the player side of things, these are player options, and there's some trinkets that come with this, and some backgrounds. So you have the Fey Lost and a Witch Light Hand, which is the background I'm going to use for Ari. So this is just going to be a, a build for, for her, and she's going to have a Carnival Companion, which I think is kind of cool. So I think that is going to be what we use to build her with as far as... Uh, the character wizard goes so so you have the uh, also the races you have the fairy race which I'm going to build one of those later I got to test it out and then the Haringen which is which we're going to build today so this is just some things that uh, kind of give you some inspiration hopefully a little bit of help there are some pretty cool things that come with the Haringen they get a special jump and they get like bonuses and all kinds of cool stuff so Check this out. And then there's some character traits that are generic that come with the Feywild and their theme for it. So if you don't have uh, anything specific, you can use the character traits here. And it just kind of is theme for the Feywild. So that's kind of cool. So there you go. So there's a couple tables, a couple backgrounds, a couple races, and a bunch of lore. So that's, that's basically what you're getting with the new set and then there's an adventure in the actual module but i'm not going to cover that right now so let's go to the character wizard so i'm going to come up here to characters it's on the right hand side now if you don't see this you want to open up your options window and come over to sidebar and what that does is it lets you customize all the buttons on the right hand side so if you have the sidebar and you don't see all these you can come over here and select which one you want so in this case, I'm going to click Create PC, which is going to only give me the character creation parts. So that's that. And now I'm going to go to Characters. And as you can see, I've already built a, a test, so I can test it out. And I'm going to use the Character Wizard. So I click that, and here's the Character Wizard. It pops up. It assumes that you have the player's handbook, at least, and official content. Like I was saying earlier, some of your third-party stuff and your homebrew stuff may not work very well in the character wizard. I think that'll get better over time. But for the time being, I just think it's easier to stick with a lot of the 
just the, the store-bought stuff for this wizard. You can always resort to going back to building the character with the old drag-and-drop method. There's nothing wrong with that. So here we go. Let's check it out. So here's the Harringen race. So when you click here, that actually selects the race. And if you want to read about it, you click over on the right. And that brings up this stat block. And you can go through here and you can read what you get. Um, and it gives you all the little details and such. So you can do this and plan your build without committing. So that's the nice thing about the character builder is you can go through race, stats, class, background, and not have to do anything other than flip back and forth between the options. But once you save it, that's when you're stuck. When it brings up the character sheet, that's basically when, when you're kind of committed at that point. So instead of committing to each one of these individually through the old drag and drop method, you're able to mix and match these until you get what you want and then save it. So just remember that when you're building. So do your planning and do your mixing and matching. And then when you're done, hit save. So let's go to, I wanted her to be uh, kind of an ambassador. i uh, going to make her more eh, based on her charisma because uh, she's going to be a bard. So I'm going to definitely give her the charisma bonus. And then if you are going to you could select a language and it would give you the language to select so it's up to you how you want to build the character but the language selection is something that um, they're working on so that this will get better as time goes on so for stats I'm gonna go with the standard array but if you wanted to you could get uh, you know a roll so you can roll the dice and that would give you some numbers to work with or you can use a point by system so it keeps track of your total up here in the right so if you keep increasing these you'll spend points as you go so if I bump all these up to let's see I'm gonna give her a 10 dex a 9 strength she doesn't really need a lot of strength I'm gonna give her an 11 con I wanna give her you know a decent intelligence because a lot of her um, abilities are based on intelligence and then Wisdom, probably at least a 10. And then Charisma, I'm going to pretty jack that up to probably really high, like 14 or so. Yeah, so there's 15 plus 1, so she's got a 16 there. And now the rest I'm going to put on Dexterity, so that will help her defenses. So that will help there. And there's the 27 points. If you try to go over, it'll tell you ability points overspent. So just keep that in mind. So that is basically how that works. And then the any bonuses here are added. So if you were going to add anything at this point, you would basically have to manually adjust it. And you can do that if you pick manual entry. So there's different ways to do this. You can do the standard array, point by, manual entry, or dice roll. That's up to you. Okay, so the next thing is stats is satisfied. We have class here. So it's going to make her a third level bard. So click on bard. And then I'm going to basically look at the proficiency. So you're given three choices at level one. Plus, I think and some of the your background will also give you skills. What's kind of nice about the character builder is it it helps with doubling up. So if you don't want to double up on skills, so the old way of doing that it doesn't check for that. This one kind of does. It just keeps the option open until you pick something else. So for this character, I want persuasion because she's going to be someone who talks to people and you know handles a lot of the negotiations and you know induction to the circus and that. I'm going to give her, let's see, she gets perception, I think. Harringans get the perception uh, skill. So I'm going to give her maybe uh, insight so she can tell if people are lying or not. And then one physical thing, I think, maybe. Um, let's see, sleight of hand, performance, actually, would be good for her. So that's basically all her, her choices there. And then, once you're done there, then you go to the background, and you're going to pick one of these. I'm going to pick the one from the witch light. So this is going to be the, the witch light um, 
What is that? They find this witch light background, one of them. So the witch light hand. So the witch light hand gives her, you know, the kind of an inside on, on the circus. Uh, let's see. I'm going to give her Sylvan or her language. So she'll have Sylvan, Common, and one other language. And then she gets a couple instruments here. So I'm going to give her the harp. That's her chosen instrument. And that's basically her tools. What else does she get for background? She gets um, another skill proficiency because obviously I doubled up somewhere. She already had one of these. So I think I'll go with maybe, let's see, survival, intimidation, athletics. I'm going to give her acrobatics. That'll help her in you know, certain things. So that that's all the choices there. And then you can go to your inventory. And you can choose your first level uh, starting equipment. Uh, this is proficiency. So she's going to be proficient with a rapier. Uh, she gets a class choice of a pack. So I'm going to give her the entertainer's pack or the diplomat. I'm going to go with the diplomat because of her role. And then she gets to pick some more instruments and tools. So let's see. Um, I think... Since she has a drum, she's going to have that. And that's part of it. And then she has leather armor and a dagger already included in this set. So that's that's basically your starting gear. Now, you can reset it at this point if you're not happy or you think you made a mistake. But there's you can go back and, and change. You know, if you click back on your choices, you can go back and change them at this point. So she has a harp and a drum. She's also proficient with, I think, a flute or something like that. And then if she wanted to go to spells, you go to the spells tab. And that will bring up the spells list for you. So this character is more of a support character. It's, she's not really a combatant type. She's more one of the types of characters that would help you in a, in a, in a pinch. She, she isn't really set up for fighting too much. So she's more negotiations, diplomacy, role play, you know, that sort of thing. So that's kind of the theme that they went with with this Witchlight um, setting is they wanted it to be a lot more role play heavy and that kind of thing. So I'm going to give her Mage Hand, which is pretty utility. And I'm going to give her prestidigitation. So she uses those all the time to do day-to-day -day tasks. And she uses her prestidig prestidigitation to charm people so that when they come into the uh, circus, she can you know, lure them in with her tricks and make everyone think that it's a good thing to join the circus. They don't realize is they probably get trapped. Um, let's see. So level one. So that's the cantrip. So level one. This is when you would basically pick your spells. So for level one, I get four choices. So I'm going to do Cure Wounds. That's pretty standard. Comprehend Languages is something that I wanted to have in case she has to do some negotiating and she wants to be able to communicate. Fairy Fire. And then one other, I think probably Sleep or something along those lines that would help her with this. I was going to give her Detect Magic, but that's really not helping it that much and fairy fire is good i think um identify is cool too but i th really think sleep is is a good one for her so she must put people to sleep instead of killing them or fighting them so those are her spells and her cantrips so now if you have any feats which in this case this character don't you can click on feats when you're all done, you'll hit save, and it will bring you to the regular character sheet. But we're not done just yet. So let me go back to race, stats, class. we got that. Background, inventory, spells, and feats. So once you save it, you're going to get the pop-up. So if I go to the characters here, this is what, what she looks like when she's done. So this character here is basically her in a nutshell. Um, I made her background a folk hero because I thought it was going to fit her story better. But when I was going to produce the show, 
I wanted to make sure I used some of the witch light content. So this this character, she has a folk hero instead of a witch light hand. But basically, um, what I've done is I've added some codes and, and features from the uh, from Rob Tui's coding packs. There's all the spells. There's all kinds of different things here that um, that would correspond with building your character. And I wanted you to realize that some of this stuff is just going to take time to learn. And then the other thing I wanted to let you know is that just because you have something that is called out in your features or your classes does not necessarily mean that it needs a code or or it can be code coded. So it just depends on what it is. So like, for instance, in here you have the creature type. You are humanoid, so you're treated as a humanoid as far as damage types and such go. Uh, that That's really not going to change anything mechanically, at least not for, for your players. So Hair Trigger adds a proficiency bonus to your initiative roll. So if you know what your proficiency roll is, so it's plus two, then you could just click the plus two modifier before you roll. You don't have to necessarily have it as a, a codable thing, but it is pretty handy when you do. The other thing is, let's see, what else does she have? So she says hair trigger. Um, bardic inspiration is something that you can track. Expertise. So this is already um, something that you have to pick yourself manually. It's not going to do it for you. There's no choice. You just have to come back to your skills and click on one of your abilities and make it two stars for double proficiency. So she is a performer and history major. And then I've also added her wood carving, and she's got her flute, hand drove, and harp. She's third level now. And then her vehicle's uh, land uh, would be a wagon. So she used to be a wagon driver um, when she first uh, got to the Witchlight um, Circus. She was a wagon driver. She would take new people from their starting destination to the circus. And over time, she became an employee and now she's kind of like a permanent recruiter. She still drives a wagon, by the way. Uh, and I thought of making a horse or some kind of animal companion for her or something like that. I was thinking of a fairy NPC or another player would be her, her ally. And then also a tortoise. So it's going to be like the tortoise and the hare. So she's going to have a, a turtle friend that she met near a pond. Uh, in the Feywild, and then she has a little fairy friend that, that hangs out with her. So I thought that would be kind of a cool little uh, trio. So anyhow, these are the instruments. She's got her artisan tools. So these are all added manually. These ones are the lines underneath it. You don't have to do that, but it makes it convenient when you're playing. If you wanted to craft something, let's say with your wood carving kit, your DM can set the, the DC challenge rating, and then you just drag and drop it into the dice tower. And if you beat your challenge rating, then succeed in whatever it is you're trying to do. Usually you're, you're gathering resources first. Sometimes you have to buy them. And then you have to have kind of like a plan to work something out or some kind of model or, or idea or some, some sort of method that you're going to use. And then your final role would probably be your, the outcome. So those, those could be roles that you make. Um, for crafting and such. And then your instruments, if you're going to do a performance, it's going to be specifically with any one of these instruments. Instead of just rolling performance, you could roll with one of these instruments. And I put for the hand drum, I use dexterity because it's not much expression in the hand drum other than beating on it, maybe softer and louder, faster or slower. But I gave that a dex instead of stat of charisma. And then the flute and the harp, you can put a lot more... Um, emotion and, and such into it. So I gave those a charisma. So you can change that about depending on what's going on. And then for vehicles land, I give her wisdom because I think that's a skill that you learn over time. Um, so she can operate a wagon safely. She knows how to take care of it. If the wheel breaks, she knows how to fix it, you know, those sort of things. So that's that's her, her background. She was a wagon driver at one point, And then she, like I said, she became a uh, introduced into the circus that way and like i said she was a rabbit too to begin with so so she has a bard college of eloquence which is basically um very 
masterful at the oratory skills like poems and speeches and, and that sort of thing and talking to people so she's got a very silver tongue is what they call that um, jack of all trades is something that you would add it's a passive ability so you would always have that up so it adds um, half your proficiency bonus rounded down so in your skills area you would put this as a half star on all the skills that you're not already proficient with and then you would um, add a plus one because it's half your proficiency bonus to your initiative which is also a, another thing that that is included so if i add her to the combat tracker and you have a skill such as that so if i go to jack of all trades let me change the mode to combat and action so jack of all trades is set up to basically give her half her proficiency bonus on initiative so if you expand that it's, there's the syntax so it's i-n-i-t or capital with the colon and then these two different uh, properties so this is half proficiency in the brackets and then self just says that this effect will only apply to her so if you click that it puts it into combat tracker and that'll always be on unless you remove it so it's a passive ability that she's going to always have silver tongue is situational um, basically you get to on uh, persuasion and deception checks if they are a 10 or less or if they're nine or less you can basically call it a nine so the silver tongue allows to where she can almost never fail unless she rolls a one so that is pretty cool so that is a note that doesn't really do anything mechanically but it comes up in the combat tracker and on her turn and such so if she uses it or talks about it there's some notes there and then if you want to expand this out and read it it tells you what what this is so the next is song of rest so this is situational if you do a short rest you would add a d6 to um, you can heal people for additional points um, it is something that that bards have some some of them and it says that they increase as you level up so at level let's see so the hit, extra hit points increase when you reach certain levels in this class so 1d8 at ninth level so on and so forth so it's 1d6 for quite a while but it is extra healing if you do like a a long rest or something or a short rest you can use it let's see what does it say you can use it on a short rest so if people announce it they, you can give them that additional healing for short rest and there is I'm pretty sure there's a uh, let's see yep and you can only use it once so that's that's another thing you can't use it indefinitely and it's only on a short rest so that's revitalizing basically you're soothing them with music or you're talking to them and helping them bind their wounds and stuff so that's kind of cool unsettling words is basically a save minus d6 you have to edit to match the bardic inspiration die so whatever the unsettling word is you roll the bardic inspiration and then you put this negative in here so you would edit this before you roll to match the die it would be save minus d6 so this would be applied to your your target so that's why it's set to target so this is something that you have to modify as you need so right now it's minus d6 but if it was a different roll or a different number you'd have to put minus d3 or something like that. so that's uh basically how that that works so this is very situational and it expends on the next action so the next thing is the racial trait so i haven't looked at rob's thing yet but i made my own so for the Harrigan hair trigger so what this is is you get to add your proficiency bonus to your initiative rolls so it's very similar to jack of all trades except for it adds your proficiency bonus so what i was thinking is that you can probably only use one of these at a time and in most cases for the D, &D fifth edition um, rule set you get the higher of the two you can't stack them so what i would do here with harrington here with or harrington is take the jack of all trades off and then i would add this this trait which is initiative 
and it's your full proficiency. It's better. So I would just add that, and that would add it to your character. But in this case, I needed to change that to self, so I have it on targets. Now let me try to do it again. There we go. So air trigger, initiative, colon two. So that adds plus two to the initiative because it's based on her um, initiative is based on her proficiency. So her proficiency bonus is two, so that'll scale up over time. Um, lucky footwork, um, that's really not a really anything that can be coded. It's basically saying you can jump, you roll a, a d4 when you fail, and a, a saving throw, and you can use your reaction, and you roll a d4, and you add it to your saving throw. So that would be very similar to unsettling words. It would kind of be the opposite. So if you wanted to take the syntax from unsettling words and use that, some of the wording there, and, and kind of make it the same, you could. I just made it a note, so I just know that, that to look at that. So I would apply that to myself, and it would just be basically a little note to keep in mind. And then the rabbit hop is something that they get um, as a racial bonus. So this, you get five times your proficiency bonus to jump. So if your proficiency bonus is two... You jump 10 feet. As long as you're not held or, you know, you have a magical rope on you or something. And then you can only use it the, the number of times of your proficiency bonus. So what I did is I just went into preparation mode and actions. Put a 2 there. So when you use those up, you check them off. And then when you rest, they'll come back. So if I use both of these as a character that disappears because I've used them all for the day however when the game master decides to rest the party so if I go to rest and go to a long rest it resets those so that's how that works and then here are the cantrips and then those were the bard things I didn't add any of the spells yet because I was going to uh, wait for the show and see if there's any questions and I can demonstrate that too so that's basically what you're getting with the Harrigan is you're getting this rabbit hop you're getting the hair trigger you're also getting the the uh, lucky footwork which really helps your um, saving throws what it does and it, since it's situational it's a d4 so you'd have to roll and then manually add that. So if you went to the modifier box, you could do that. So let's just say I'm a Harrington uh, player character. I just drop a D4 in the chat and then drag and drop it into my modifier box and then initiate the save, whatever that is. So if I wanted to save or the DM wanted to, to force the save on me, they would add that to the, to the amount. It just depends on the situation. But that's basically how that works. So... That you can only, if you roll a, a, wow, a five, that's a bonus for some reason. I don't, oh, it added the plus two, duh. So let me do it without the, okay, so if you wanted to roll and you want the number, here, here's one, so this time it's only adding plus one. And then you would do your save. So that's basically how that works. And if you come over here and you do your save, let's say it's a deck save, which is what it normally is. Uh, in combat that is it'll add that in so whenever you make saves or your dm initiate saves that would be something that needs to be calculated in depending on the situation so it really depends on how well and how much you stick to the rules and all that good stuff but basically you have that ability which is pretty cool for the for the harrigan so the the next step that i'm going to do is put this on a map really quick and just see what it looks like let's let's uh let's do that so the Harrigan is, I got this little token I made from the Hero Forge, which is on the combat tracker, which is what you want. You want you want them on there first. And then I'm going to go to the, I guess this would be your uh, maps down here. So if I have a Sacred Grove, I put a little bit of line of sight on it, nothing fancy. There's some cloud cover, and it's nighttime. Um, but you can go in and unlock the map if you're the Game Master. And you can turn off the lighting if you want to disable it. Or you can come into your your lighting and go to the ambient light and then change the day, change the evening to day. So if I go to dawn, 
that's what it looks like. Uh, there's there's a fire going on in this pit, so it's kind of hard to see it right now. But uh, if I go into the drop a player on here, it'll be a little easier to see. But once you're done with playing around with that, you got to go back to play mode and make sure those are on. So this is uh, without the player vision. This is with. So it's just removing the shadows at this point. So I'm going to put uh, Hari on the on the map here. So you drag them from the combat tracker and you put them on the map. So when you possess the token or when you select it, that's when the line of sight and all that will, will show up. When you're not using it, then then it basically doesn't show that. So if you're a game master and you're selecting an NPC or a player, that's, that's what you're going to see. I think that's where a lot of confusion comes in. So if you want to see what they are going to see... You either click on their token and kind of take a look around, and you can click Control P, which adds the line of sight too. So this is a way to preview. So if I turn that on, that's permanently on, or you can do a preview. That's just for the game master, basically, is a, a enable or disable player vision. So if I go to the play mode and come here, and if I want to change it to nighttime, so let's do that. So go to lighting. And I'm going to change the preset now to to uh, nighttime. So this is daytime right now. So we're going to go ahead and um, it was dawn basically. So if I go to dusk and then I go back to this play mode and hit Control P, I kind of get an idea of what's going on. So there's what she can see. So this the torch light is is basically casting uh, that's what this fire pit is basically based on torchlight so when you take herring and you could see the take possession of Hari herring and she could see it pretty well but she needs the torchlight basically or in this case it's campfire so that's one thing um, and then that's what it's gonna look like in her view so that's with the enable player vision on. It's player vision off. So this is what the player would see. And you do that by hitting control P temporarily. Just so that you can see the shadows now where she can't see through objects. So some of the thicker trees and such you can't see through. Those. So that's basically Ari Harrington. Um, she's third level bard of eloquence. She basically is like a negotiator. She works for the, the circus now. She, like I said, she was a wagon driver um, in her former career. Uh, she was taking customers back and forth to this ancient forest. Um, and basically she was a rabbit uh, on the, in a cage in a wagon. And then she eventually uh, metamorphosed into this humanoid rabbit. And then she just became the caretaker of the wagon because the previous guy, he passed away. So she took it over. Um, so she was somebody's pet, or maybe she was a polymorphed human or something. But the uh, Feywild and the magic to do with the circus has changed her. So that's what happened to Hari Harrington. So she basically... Uh, she she became part of this witch light just uh, from being around and exposed to the to the circus for a while. So if we look at her background, you go to the main area. Let's take a look at her uh, background. So this is the folk hero background. So that why well, I changed this so she wouldn't have to necessarily be a part of the circus, but she could still be the driver that takes people back and forth. And in her case, for her notes. Um, Something had happened to her as a when uh, she was still a rabbit, <laughs> and whenever somebody's in trouble, she feels compelled to help them. That's kind of the person she is. But she's very confident in her abilities to do what she can to instill confidence and to help others through things. But she does really believe that she has a destiny that's much greater than she can um, grasp. So she always thinks that there's always some kind of greater thing that she's supposed to be doing. And it could be true. It may not be. 
but at one time, um, when during her travels, there was a noble that she had to take back and forth, and he was really rude to her, and he basically kicked her butt and uh, gave her a bad time. So, um, she, at some point, she would like to avenge herself um, from that bully, and that's one of the things that keeps her um, kind of grounded is that she knows that you know, there, there are people out there that are cruel and mean. She has to be careful, and then. F- She's really convinced of that significance of the destiny that she supposedly has, and she's kind of blind to that shortcoming and the risk of failure. So she's got this hang-up, and that's that's what it is. It's, she thinks she's destined for something great. She might very well be, but she doesn't know that. Um, and then she supposedly has a celestial fay or a similar creature that gave her a blessing and revealed her secret origin. So at one point, I think the fairy magic or the mother nature herself had granted her the ability to be this humanoid rabbit. I think that had something to do with her transformation. So make up however you want, but it's all make believe and to do with that. So I'm going to make a fairy and a turtle, and that's going to be her, her companion. So that, that'll be my next video. If I do one, it's going to be based on that. So I'll make the turtle ahead of time because I think most people understand what the turtle is and what goes into it. But I think I'll do the fairy live and then it'll kind of tie into this video. So is there any questions about the new character builds or anything? I'm just kind of showing you what uh, what's available in the actual uh, module as far as character options go. So I'll recap really quick. Um, go to the library. And I'm going to just go to the player part. I'm not going over the adventure and the maps and all that stuff. Just the character options. And you have the DM adventure part of it. And then there's the player part, which is the building content. So if you come to this Witchlight players view here, and then you go to the backgrounds or the reference manual, um, you will see what, what, what comes with it. So you, you come over here to the reference manual on the player's book. And there's a player's options, and there's the trinkets that come with there, and there's a table that you can roll on. So if you want to give your character some appropriately themed, uh, basically some really cool uh, trinkets from that world, you can roll on the table, and it will come up with a, a, a Feywild trinket. And it says it's a chess piece shaped like a dancing satire wearing a bishop or a satyr, wearing a bishop's hat and clutching a gnarled staff. So there's just lots of different little things that, that pop up. And that becomes like a little little item that you put in your inventory. So you have that too for kind of for flavor. Like I said, you got the two backgrounds. The Fey Lost, someone who's kind of lost in the Fey Wild. And then the Witch Light Hand. So... Which light hand? So you joined the carnival to escape a dismal life at home, or maybe you were enchanted by the idea of visiting new places, or the dream of becoming one of the care of the carnival's star attractions. So I don't think she's a star attraction, but she's a very important person when it comes to bringing people to the circus. She doesn't really take people away, but she definitely takes them there. So that's her duty is to bring people back and forth more more forth than back, but uh, supposedly you're supposed to have a travel companion if you have this background. So if you roll on here, if she was, it says a cheery sprite. Well, I was going to pick as fairy anyway, so that's pretty close. So that's cool. I'm going to put that on her sheet. So if you want to put that as a note, even though this isn't her background, I'm still going to put it on here because it ties in with her story. So cheery sprite is her would be your companion if she had that background. So that's basically uh, the show for today. I think I rambled enough. So we kind of went through the character creation process, and then I skipped over a lot of the the customization, but I was showing you the actions tab that you can have these abilities put on here. You don't necessarily have to code them, just as long as you understand what your character has. So if you go to your abilities tab, um, you can pop these out, and if it's something that you want to remember... Or something you need, like this, let's say the silver tongue. You can drag and drop this into the hotkeys or the hot bar down below. So when you're playing this character, if you want to use that, you just pop this up, 
tell your DM that you have this ability, and then you just drag it into the chat window, and the DM can read it. So that's how the D and D use or most of the rule sets are played that way, anyways. So if you really don't want the coding or you don't want to get into that right now, that's that's how you can do it. So anyhow, take care. Have a good evening. Hope to see you guys around again. This is Founder Lehman with Fantasy Grounds Academy. If you have not joined our community, um, I don't know what's stopping you, but uh, we definitely will try to help you as best we can with the platform, even some rules, questions. Uh, tomorrow, around this time, I'm going to be doing a map class. So if you guys want some brush up on the map tools, that's going to happen tomorrow. I only got two students, so there's plenty of room. I got room for eight more. So if you guys want to come and join the class, it'll be tomorrow, uh, Thursday, September 23rd at 4 p.m. Pacific time or 7 p.m. Eastern. And again, just be in the held in the Fantasy Grounds College. If you go to our website, if you're registered there, you can book the class. So take care, everybody. Hope to see you around. Enjoy the new content and uh, 